So in this segment, we're going to be discussing um, the Trade Secretary, Kevin Badnitch, getting kind of ripped apart here over the UK's um, trade, kind of the drop-off with uh, Brexit and the crappy trade deals and agreements that we're signing up to, like the CPTPP. And um, she struggles and she waffles a lot, uh, as always, and we're going to try and debunk some of the points that she makes. Um, the Select Committee did an okay job here, this gentleman here, um, Angus McNeil, did a good job. But um, I think they need a lot more at hand when they're kind of questioning people. But I, I'm not going to drag him too much over this when uh, it's not him who deserves to be dragged. So let's have a look at the video and um, we'll kind of comment as we go. There's, there's no cold war, but certainly I think everybody and every observer would say that there's been a trade cooling uh, with, with Europe. Uh, and some of the, what you've laid out there about a growing middle class in different parts of the world is not mutually exclusive. You, you, could, have, you could have both. Uh, the, the issue there is like just because you have a growing middle class in say um, India or Bangladesh or any you know any developing nation, you know their, their middle class is not like a, a develop a, like a middle class in like a Western nation or even even a kind of a Central slash Eastern European nation like a, like a Poland for example. The middle class in Poland would have a lot more money than say the middle class in uh, Bangladesh. So even if we get an agreement with uh, a country like Bangladesh, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. You know, you can't talk about a growing middle class and say uh, China and say we'll export loads more over there, because how how powerful would a Chinese middle class even be? You know, how much money would they actually have to buy uh, British goods? So it's all nonsense, especially in the context of agri food as well. Um, but yeah, we'll go on. Um, your own government's, and I'm sure you know, I'm just going to ask this because I've asked this to every Secretary of State. Your own government's GDP figures mm -hmm. for what you're losing and what you're gaining. Uh, and given that none of the trade deals are actually operational yet, can you tell us the balance of uh, gain to loss uh, from your own government's figures? So it's, it, uh, I think you, you actually asked me this question the last time I was here, and it's, I, I just see it completely differently. It is, so you'd think you'd have a good answer, right, if, if he's asked you this question before? Not a zero-sum game where we're doing something here and we've lost uh, something uh, with the EU. You can grow trade across both regions, and that is what we are doing. GDP figures are uh, multivariate. They have lots of elements in them beyond trade. And I've talked about the shocks to trade policy uh, or to the trading environment uh, in, previous, in, in the previous select committee. So I think that's how you need to look at what is going on rather than uh, losing something from the EU in order to gain something with CPTPP. The EU could still join CPTPP, it might not. Other countries could do. So we need to look at what the potential is there, but also making sure that we have control over our... Uh... So, so with this, this idea that EU could join the CPTPP, it would be a bad idea, right? But the CPTPP, I think, primarily gets rid of things like quotas and uh, tariffs. So you're still going to face customs issues and all of that kind of red tape. So it does help reduce some aspects of like trade barriers, but it doesn't reduce them all. And non-tariff trade barriers are pretty gnarly to deal with. You need a lot of help just to deal with those. So this this idea that you know the C you can't compare figures between what we lost with EU trade versus CPTPP is nonsense. If the idea was that we would leave the EU and become global Britain and do trade all over the world, it's fair game that we we continue to look at what we have lost in terms of EU trade versus what we have with the rest of the world trade. And that's something we'll talk about um, in a few minutes. But you know she's she's arguing that you can't make a comparison when you one hundred percent can make the comparison. Trading relationships and that's. That's what's really good about this new agreement, that there's no loss of sovereignty, there is no parliament, there is no political integration. It is more You know, they, we can get sued in secret courts over certain companies uh, if they lose profits over regulation changes that we make. So that this idea that there's no loss of sovereignty is nonsense. We've lost sovereignty to a bunch of secret courts that could sue us. So please remind me how uh, that's so much better than what we had as an EU member state. Because, you know, I kind of wish he would bring up this point, but he, he doesn't have it at hand. And I think it's an important one to mention. More like what the European uh, economic community was. It's a trading community. And, and that's where we think uh, the direction should be for the UK. Use the phrase there, a zero-sum game. Mm. I think a zero-sum game would be a gain on what's happened. Because it's been less than a zero-sum game. It's been a, a loss of GDP. And you don't... Your own figures, Secretary State, give you which a figures, Which from, figures are you referring well, to? There, there's OBR figures at 4%, the Treasury's published figures about 4.8, 4.9%. And the gains that you have flagged for the trade deals that aren't yet in operation 
are about 0 0.08, 0 0.08, I think 0 0.02 for New Zealand, 0 0.08 for Australia, 0 0.08 for CPTPT, and 0 0.02 for New Zealand. Now, if, if this was horse racing, these figures are equivalent to going to the races with 490 or 500 pounds or 400 pounds, um, and betting that money and losing that money. Mm. To be told you're winning eight pounds and eight pounds and two pounds means you've got 18 pounds, but the bookie's not yet paid out. So you say this this isn't really uh, a good way of economic stewardship. For so the, the other issue with the the kind of numbers is that that zero there's zero point two figure for New Zealand, and I think the zero point eight figure for Australia their best case scenario. I think the the margin of error is like zero point two percent or something like that. So the New Zealand deal could minus GDP, so you won't be getting plus two pounds. You'd be losing two pounds. Um, the betting analogy doesn't make sense in the context that I put it in, um, but we'd be losing money essentially. And um, yeah, so in the context, the way he's put it, I think it's fine. But I think it's a bit more generous than it has to be. Maybe I'm being mean. I don't know. Or the government. All right. So of the United I, Kingdom. So, so I think you know what I'm going to say next, which is I disagree with every single thing um, that what? you heard. <laughs> you disagree with the government's but, figures. <laughs> but, um, but 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 allow me to to elaborate on why. So you talk about the Good. WTO. Uh, you talk about the w, uh, sorry, not WTO. Uh, pardon me, the OBR four yeah. percent figure. When I looked at that, because it's lower than the government figure. It's, no, no, no. It's, it's, when I looked at that and tried, it is lower than the government figures that he cited earlier. That if the government has said it's four point eight, and the OBR put it at four percent, then objectively one is lower than the other. So I don't know what she's objecting to there. To work out where they were getting this from. That is a figure which they base on us leaving the EU on WTO terms, which we didn't do. We left with a free trade agreement. So interrogating the figures and understanding what people are putting into their analysis is part of it. And it's more So what she said there is, is nonsense. I'll tell you why, because um, the OBR reiterated in 2022, so this is way after the free trade, um, the uh, trade and cooperation agreement, is from Simon Jack saying, the OBR says it's forecast that Brexit will knock 4% uh, uh, off, our, uh, off our GDP over 15 years. It's proving correct with the data so far. So 100 billion pounds um, per year by the looks of it, according to uh, Simon Jack, who's citing the OBR figures. So this idea that the OBR um, you know, made this calculation before the free trade agreement is, I think, technically true, but the OBR have stuck to its forecast um, of the 4% and it's proving to be correct. So this argument that she's using is nonsense. So what she's trying to do is trying to pick holes, trying to pick holes in the forecast and other things to say, oh, these things are nonsense. These predictions, these forecasts, you know, are not worth listening to. Therefore, you can't make the comparison you're making. Whilst, you know, we can see here that, you know, regardless of free trade agreement or not, the OBR were correct and they never they never revised the figure because we got the free trade agreement. That's the important thing to remember because the OBR could have come out and said, oh, because of the free trade agreement, the Brexit impact is going to be 3.5% or 3%. They stuck to their 4% figure. One of the things, I think if we were having more uh, uh, committee sessions, I, I actually think it's one of the things that we need to look at. What is it that we're doing with these numbers? Because as a new Secretary of State coming in and asking questions and then being told, well, it's, it's 0.08%, then interrogate the figures and you look at the assumptions that come into, that come into, uh, come into how they make the analysis. I just don't think that they would stack up in terms of how we're using them. What officials are doing with those numbers is different from what we are doing. And I used the phrase when I had the oral statement, a forecast is different from, from a model. We have uh, a model that does not take into account that the figures we used for the CPTPT, for example, is based on 2014 figures. We still don't have, uh, we still don't have the latest figures. It does you would think that as Trade Secretary, you would have commissioned your department to look into the new figures then, you, to come up with a new number. That's surely you would do that as part of your job, right? Surely that would be the due diligence that the Tories should have to do if they're saying we want to join a new trade block. There would have to be some sort of impact assessment report, right? You didn't commission one. I wonder why. Doesn't take into account potential growth of the economies that are that are there and their forecasts rather than a model. It doesn't take into account the new countries that are going to join uh, CPTPP. But what new countries? Which which new countries are looking to join? Yeah, she's waffling. Even if so, we can go into we can go into detail about whether the the numbers are accurate. We might get beyond point zero eight, right? Point zero nine. So so no. Pardon. 
No, and, and, and in fact, I would say that the models are, they are binary, they are binary calculations. And I came from a background in banking where people built models and people with others were free to interrogate them. And that was what improved, that was what improved the analysis. Whereas in Parliament, we treat these numbers as if they are sacred texts from on high and no one dare quibble them. It is not... That's garbage. That's garbage. I'll tell you why. The, the government consistently downplays OBR and IMF forecasts that make the government look bad. They say, oh, the IMF gets stuff all the, all the, all the time. The OBR gets stuff all the time. Gets stuff wrong all the time. That's what the government say. Once the OBR come up with a number they like, or, you know, the OBR have um, forecasts they like, they say, oh, the OBR have said this is a great thing that we're doing and we're really pushing things along. So they, this argument she's saying that, oh, we treat these forecasts as sacred texts is garbage. Especially, especially for a Brexiteer to say it as well, because the the simple fact is, you know, they're the ones that have been downplaying forecasts since 2016. So the, the argument she's using here is a bunch of baloney, and it's just painful to hear her get away with this. And it's not just, I'm not going to blame Angus McNeil here. I think he's doing an admirable job, but I think there needs to be um, a higher level of kind of criticism that should be leveled at these ministers who are just doing a rubbish job in any way uh, casting aspersions on any of the institutions, whether it's my own department or the OBR. Oh, is there any value but in your no, modelling? There, there is value because they give us a data point, but it is just one metric. What we need to do is then uh, respond with actions on, well, if this is, okay. is this correct? If not, what are we going to do? What is our strategy going to be? How do we evolve our policy? And that's what we're doing. So, so you can see the full kind of analysis. For, you can see the full... Uh, kind of session if you want i'll link it below shouts out politics joe for clipping it um but but for me um she's talking she's talking nonsense you know for her saying oh we we need to go we need to look at where the figures come from that's fine and criticize them or whatever but but if, if your department's coming up with the figures of 0 0.2 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 then that's a problem and if you're querying the figures coming out of your own department fair enough she's not been there long but clearly there's an issue if you're querying the numbers and surely you should have been querying the numbers for a lot longer than you have been. Um, if the your issue is with methodology, surely you should call for an overhaul from your department and looking at getting a different methodology and maybe looking at uh, what other countries do for their kind of trade methodology. But you haven't. And that's why I think her arguments are nonsense, absolute nonsense. And um, it kind of I think this kind of session kind of exposed her for her lack of ability to defend Brexit, the Brexit trade deals and all of this kind of stuff, um, because she hasn't been able to, you know, this idea that we can't compare the kind of lost EU trade versus the rest of the world trade. That's garbage, we can. You know, this idea that, well, maybe more countries will join the CPTPP, etc., and we don't really know what's going on. Is like, well, well, let's look at the CPTPP now. Let's look at what the trade impact's gonna be right now, regardless of what happens to the other countries. You know, their economies could grow, they could shrink, or whatever, right? Let's look at the situation on a given day and say, this is how much it'll grow the economy by. And if it's 0.08% or 0.10%, then so be it, you know, accept that number instead of constantly trying to query stuff coming out of your own department. Maybe you should actually look at getting a modern report done to say, based on 2022 figures, this is what the CPTPP would add to the UK's GDP. Um, and that's what's kind of annoying me a lot because she's getting away with this stuff of trying to blame kind of her own department for using old figures when she should be the one pushing for new figures. Uh, but anyways, before I lose my mind and this cold overtakes me, let me know what you think. In the actually, do you know what? There was something I actually want to talk about. Sorry, apologies. There was this. Um, there was this Ian King saying the UK has slipped down the global trade rankings of countries involved in the export of goods and services. The UK is now seventh globally, down from fifth. So clearly you can see that we've dropped two places in terms of global trade exports. And that's without the full kind of financial impact that we're going to see from the lot um, from EU uh, financial services not having access to the UK. Uh, we're going to see that outside uh, around 2025, depending on um, if the EU have got all their ducks in a row and depending on the progress McGuinness makes. So that's going to be interesting. And you can clearly see here, there's a problem. Um, there is a problem that's happened with the UK's exports. So this idea, we can't compare, well, something's going on and she needs to explain what exactly has happened. You know, using all this, ah, oh, COVID and Ru the Russian invasion of Ukraine, that's impacted everyone. And yet somehow we've slipped trading places. Surely everything should move back fairly uh, to, to, you know, kind of how it was, you know, everyone's numbers would be impacted badly and we'd drop a place at best, but we've dropped two. And I reckon in a few years we'll drop three or four. Uh, but anyways, I, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. A like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.